friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the next six books that I read in the month of April. Because of everything being shut down and social isolation, I've been doing a lot more reading and so I've decided to break things up into smaller chunks. I will link part one above if you're interested in checking that out. Let's jump into the books. The first book that I'm going to talk about today is If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. So this is a book that has been on my TBR for a long time and I started February 2019, I want to say. Do you ever do that thing where you you pick up a book and you know it's a good book, but it's not the right time for it, and you know that if you read it, you won't like it? Like, if you force yourself to read it, you won't like it. Somehow that happened, and it's just been sitting on my currently reading shelf. I decided it was finally time to go back to it this month. So this is a story that really explores injustice and racism in America. So Tish is a 19 year old black girl who is deeply in love with Fawny. She and Fawny are about to take the next step in their life, get married, move in together, all that jazz, when Fawny is wrongly accused of raping a woman and he is incarcerated for this. Tish is pregnant and so she desperately wants him to get out of jail and it's really exploring the social inequities in America and the deeply rooted racism and in many ways it is a super politically charged text that is still super relevant today and it's also a really like quiet text. I found the relationship between Tish and Fanny really compelling. I really enjoyed the scene where uh, Tish, is, Tish tells her family that she's pregnant and they tell Fanny's family that she's pregnant and just like the really strong and different personalities reactions to this news. It was beautiful. It was beautifully written and I feel like I'm really excited to see the filmic adaptation which came out quite recently opposed to the book. Uh, this came out in 1974 so the book is quite a bit older than the filmic adaptation. This came from my TBR and I gave it four to five stars. The next book that I finished was also one of those books sitting on my TBR for a really long time and that is the audiobook of Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese. This is a piece of indigenous literature set in Canada. It is dealing with the residential school system and the genocide project of the indigenous school system, inexcusable violence and damage that was done to indigenous communities based on the abuse and the loss that happened within these schools that continues to trickle down through the generations. Our main character is a child in a residential school and he loves hockey. He is too young to be on the team that's put together but every day he has this pair of skates that he's padded the toes of with newspaper and he has like this grungy stick. The only way he's been allowed to be included is to shovel the ice for the hockey players, the other kids who are playing hockey. And so he is shoveling the ice and then using a horse turd or a cow turd as a hockey puck and that's how he uh, is developing these skills and he just has this natural gift and this joy for hockey and because he has this talent we see him be recruited by larger and larger teams until eventually he is on a mostly white team in Toronto and that racism that he faces destroys him. The book is ultimately about dealing with the trauma of being in the residential schools and rekindling this love for hockey and using this team sport as a way to connect and to build community and to help the next generation of Indigenous youth. And so I have to say the reason that I put it down to begin with, so this was a, I think it was around Christmas, it just sort of appeared as like a, hey this is free on Audible, check it out. And so I downloaded it. I started listening to it because I've always heard good things about Richard Wagamese and it was the hockey that was actually off putting to me because it was so hockey heavy and I am a Canadian that doesn't like hockey. I have a lot of resentment towards hockey because of how much I was forced to engage with it by a particularly enthusiastic grade school teacher who was totally obsessed with the Leafs. And then I was like, okay, I don't have that much left of the audiobook. Let's start it again. Let's go through it. And so I restarted the audiobook and just like let myself sit with it and it was surprisingly good. I enjoyed it 
despite my initial like hockey turnoff, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. So this did come off my TBR and I gave it four to five stars. The next book that I read, I borrowed from the library and that is The Unhoneymooners by Christian Lauren. On Honeymooners is told from the perspective of Olive, who is uh, one of a set of twins, uh, Amy and Olive. And Amy is getting married to this like dude bro guy who has a douchey brother that Olive absolutely hates. They met and it didn't go well and they hate each other. Amy is a bargain hunter. Her wedding cost her like maybe a thousand dollars despite throwing this like giant big white Italian wedding. Everything goes wrong when every single person who attended the wedding ends up with food poisoning from the free seafood buffet except for Olive who has a deadly seafood allergy and the groom's brother who Olive hates end up going on this honeymoon together. It's a non-transferable win. They take this honeymoon and they have to pretend to be a married couple even though they hate each other. And of course, because this is a romantic comedy, it's a joyful time. It was a delightful read. I devoured it. I will say that the discussion of the projectile vomiting everywhere that the seafood mishap that was described just got my heart beating really fast, made me really uncomfortable, and I was like, oh, I wish somebody had mentioned the amount of vomit in the beginning of this cute, fluffy, escapist book, but luckily I made it past it, borrowed that one from the library, and I ended up giving it four to five stars just on pure, like, fluff escapist enjoyment. Then I read Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy and this was a little bit of a disappointment. Sweet Pea is a plus-sized 13 year old who has a really great best friend that she's really close with and an ex-best friend who she doesn't understand why they fell out. Things really go wrong for Sweet Pea when everybody in their class except for her is invited to this birthday party and Sweet Pea decides to crash the party anyways and it is at a trampoline place and she eats the pizza and pop like everyone else but then just projectile vomits all over the trampoline and the birthday girl and like things are not going well for her. Her parents are recently divorced because her father has come out as gay so it's not something that her parents can reconcile. So she's struggling with that. She is answering the mail for the local advice columnist, Miss Flora May. She's supposed to be taking the mail and just forwarding it to Miss Flora May, but what she ends up doing is sneaking in some of her own advice and that sort of backfires. There are a lot of like cute, funny, moving parts, and I could see this being adapted into a really cute kids, like Disney family-friendly movie. However, the reason that I didn't like this was because Murphy was too good at capturing a very like whiny, self-centered, me, 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 obsessed main character. Um, and I feel like a lot of us are like that when we're in middle school, when we're in grade school. Everything revolves around us. We want it to be our way. We don't have a lot of empathy. We're not good at making self-sacrifice or doing things because we know it's good for the other people. Like, Sweet Pea still wants her parents to get back together, even though that would mean that both of them would be unhappy and unfulfilled. She'd be forcing her gay father to never find like a satisfying, fully satisfying relationship and same for her mother, right? And it's just too accurate to the types of stuff that like I can totally see myself doing at like 12, 13, grade eight, right? Like I, I can remember that type of drama that we had and how like silly and selfish, the lack of empathy, the empathy hadn't developed yet. And it's almost too real in this to enjoy it. This did come from my TBR and I ended up giving it three to five stars. That being said, I wonder if this will ring true with young people actually in this age bracket because the way that Murphy has captured an 
actual child feels so true to how I remember acting and thinking as a child that I wonder if it will ring really true to readers in the way that like when teens read John Green, they're like, who talks like this? What teenager talks like this? I'd be curious if you have a young reader in your life, did they enjoy this? Because obviously this isn't meant for me. I have an interest in children's literature, but it's not meant for me. I'm very curious about target market response. The next book that I read, I borrowed on audio from the library, and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Jenkins, Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I chose to borrow this on audio because I heard a lot of people talking about how great the audiobook was, and given the topic of the book, that it was sort of musicians reflecting on their life as much younger humans, working together to produce music, make the band happen, make this album happen. Um, it sounded like a story that really lent itself to audio. It was super compelling. Like there were so many moments where I found myself forgetting that this isn't a real band, that I can't Google the album to hear the songs that they're talking about, that I can't Google Daisy Jones to see the outfit and the album cover that they're talking about. It doesn't really sound like something I'd be into, but clearly it's told in such an effective way that I was able to suspend my disbelief so much that I, I on multiple occasions, forgot that this wasn't a true story. It was a surprise. It was, uh, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would based on the premise. I gave it three out of five stars. It's not something that I could ever see myself reading or listening to again, but I am glad I did check it out. The last book that I'm going to share with you today is a graphic novel that I borrowed from the library, and that is Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganache. Gan you chew? Gan you show? Gan you show? I butchered it. You're welcome. So this was a really cute queer graphic novel about a boy whose family has this sort of struggling Greek bakery. The son is really being forced into the bakery by his father, but the son really wants to leave this small town, go to the big city and be a musician, and his work in the bakery sort of has him cut off from the rest of the band. Like, they're going to look at apartments so they can live together. He doesn't get to do that. Um, and so the son is really looking to hire a replacement so that he can go pursue his dreams. And he ends up bringing in this just glorious human being who loves baking, went to school for it, is taking a year off from the schooling to get some practical experience. The two of them really connect and develop a friendship. I think it's about really seeing where your passions lie, what makes you happy, what brings you joy, and pursuing what brings you joy. I loved the entirely blue color palette of this graphic novel. I loved the illustration style. Again, I love really round illustrations, and even though this was sparse because of the color palette, I loved it. It very much reminds me of the all pink color palette of Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me uh, that I read last month. So I ended up giving that four to five stars, and I did borrow that from the library. So those are the next six books that I read in the month of April. Let me know your thoughts on these books in the comments down below. Have you read any of them. Before we go, we have to thank my patrons. Thank you, patrons, for making videos like this possible. I really appreciate the work that you are enabling me to do. If you are interested in becoming a patron and supporting the channel, links to the Patreon page are in the description box down below. I hope you are all staying safe and healthy, and until next time, happy reading, and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>